this video, I'm going to cover some basics about finding derivatives using Mathematica. In particular, we're going to look at how to find the derivative of a function and evaluate it at a particular value, and how to write the equation of a tangent line. All right, in the first example, we're asked to find for this particular function f of x, or asked to find its first derivative. So I've already got my function ready to store. And if I want to calculate the first derivative, it's as simple as putting a single prime onto the function name f. And you can see that it gives me the correct derivative using the power rule. So to evaluate f prime of 6, you would just type in f prime of 6. However, there is another notation. Um, I find most students prefer to use the prime notation, but if you want to, you can use the D command. D stands for derivative. And if I wanted to, first of all, just find the derivative, I would put in my function name, open up a pair of set brackets, begin with x, and then put a number to indicate which derivative of x you're looking for. So if it's the first derivative, you would put a one. And you can see I got the same answer as I did before. To use the d command to evaluate a derivative at a specific value, you begin the same way. And then outside of the d command, you use forward slash dot x arrow, and you put the particular value you want to evaluate this function at. And again, you can see I got the same result. It's a lot more typing to do it that way, but it is an option. Now, how would I go about finding the fourth derivative? Well, you can go crazy with the primes, and notice we get zero because since our highest power is to the third power, by the time we get to the fourth derivative, we're taking the derivative of a constant and getting zero. If you want to use the D command, in this instance, you know, it's a little nicer not to have to tap the prime. That's how you would do the same command with the D notation. And again, if we wanted the fourth derivative of two, you either do or. So that's how you find basic derivatives. In this next example, I'm being asked to write the equation of a tangent line. And I'm using the same function from above, f of x, and we're going to write the equation of the tangent line, the line that touches that curve at only one point for x equals negative 1. There's a hint there that you need to use something called the point-slope formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, when you're ready to write that equation of a tangent line. The first thing you would do would be to store your function. Mine is still stored from above, as I just showed you there. And to use point-slope formula, you need two things. You need the coordinates of a point, an x1, y1, and you need a slope. In order to get the point, I know I'm interested in x equals negative 1. So I substitute that into the original function, get the output, and that'll be the y coordinate that I need. So my x1 is going to be negative 1, and my y1 is going to be negative 11. Next, I need the slope. To find the slope of the tangent line, that's the derivative. Okay, the derivative is the slope of the line tangent to the curve at a particular point. It's also known as the rate of change at that point. So if I want to find the slope, that's when I use the derivative. I put in the x value where I'm going to be writing my tangent line, and my slope is 16. Now I'm going to switch to text for a second, and I'll show you the process I would use. I would take my formula, and now I've just typed in my substitutions that I'll be doing. My input was negative 1, my output was negative 11 my slope was 16. So you can see I'm going to substitute that in the next line. So I have y minus a negative 11 is the same as y plus 11 equals slope of 16. x minus a negative 1 will become the same as adding 1. And then before I am ready to actually store this function, I would need to solve for y. So I'd need to subtract the 11 over to the other side. So once you found your tangent equation, which for the sake of argument, I'll store it as t of x, it would be 16 
x plus 1 with a minus 11 because of moving the 11 over to the other side. And that's my equation of my tangent. And if I were to put in a super basic plot command here, you should notice that at negative 1, which is approximately right there, it does appear that this tangent line is going to touch and then start moving away again. That's all you need to know.